Today, we're looking at an older scanner radio, which I picked up at an electronics flea market, specifically the Radio Shack Pro 2021. And yes, this is an old analog receiver. You can get one of these now for 10 to $20 on a flea market or online. We'll look at its features, but you can still receive with it. And you might be surprised as how well this unit still works. We'll also go over programming the unit and anything relevant to it. So let's get started. And here we are looking at the Pro or PRO, depending on who you ask, 2021. Uh, basically an old realistic 200 channel scanner, which still works fine. And let me go over the uh, front functions really quickly. Volume is right here, which is basically controls the, obviously the sound coming out of the unit, followed by the squelch, which uh, basically opens up uh, essentially sensitivity, if you will, for all the intensive purposes, followed by the delay button, which basically what it does is it allows you to um, hold a uh, frequency when it finds something that you're interested in without starting to scan the minute the uh, other end releases the microphone. So if there's something interesting going on, you definitely want to use this. Speed changes the scanning speed, as you can see. Now it's scanning slower. And I find that on this unit, with a good antenna or outdoors, um, it doesn't really matter what speed you're on, it will pick it up. Sometimes if you're looking for a weaker signal, speed might make a difference. Delay is how long it stays on a channel. And this is useful when something is going on that you do not want to move on from immediately. And this is also set per memory channel. And speed, again, is how fast it scans. The other buttons, we'll cover as we go through the unit. And you got 20 banks of 20 entries each. You can scan all or just some of the banks. To program, move to channel you want to program, hit the program button, type in the frequency, and hit enter. So let me demonstrate that. Currently it's only scanning bank one. You can see that with the line below. So we are on channel one right now. And this is basically the uh, local police frequency here for Pacifica Police Department, which is where I am. And it's a 488.7375 megahertz. So in this example, I went to channel 20. Uh, channel 20 does not have anything programmed into it. It says 000. I'm gonna hit program. And I'm gonna put in the uh, marine emergency frequency just uh, for the hell of it. Uh, 156.8, enter. And there it is. Now channel 20 is the emergency frequency for uh, the marine band. When you hit program again, it will advance to the next channel. As you can see, it is 21. And you can also hit the up key. Uh, the clear will delete the input while programming. So if you make a mistake, clear button will do that trick. Banks up here are controlled by the buttons according to 1 through 20, 21 through 40, etc and you can hit them uh, as desired for scanning. If you are interested in uh, scanning multiple things, I recommend setting, for example, bank one could be the ham radio frequencies, uh, like repeaters and simplex calling, 21 through 40 could be your local emergency and etc. That's how I do it. You can use the manual mode and select channels in order to program by using the manual key. Look out marks channels to be skipped. This is useful if you program them into the unit and don't want to listen to them temporarily. Priority channel can be set but only on one channel. This is something if you are monitoring where you don't want to miss anything. To turn off banks you do not want to scan, hit the corresponding button. The bars on top of the LCD right here indicate which bank you're scanning. I am currently scanning bank one which corresponds to program channels 1 through 20. You probably don't want to be enabling all of the program channels because you're, you'll be scanning 200 channels and that takes quite a while to go through. It takes about, looks like about three seconds to go through 20 channels and there's a good chance you miss something. You can use it in manual mode and select channels in order to program by using the manual key, which is right here. And that is how you go about selecting channels. This is the limit scan. 
you can set the upper and lower limits. This is the lower limit. You see the bar right here, top is the upper limit and lower limit. That's basically what tells you where you are. Hit monitor and basically you'll have 10 frequencies that you can be saving in the monitor mode. To go back to scan, hit the scan button. This is where you'll be most of the time. As soon as you increase the squelch, it will continue scanning. If you have the squelch too low, even though you don't, even if you don't have the volume on, it will hold the frequency. So make sure you move it up just enough so it starts scanning. We talked about the um, lockout, which marks the channels to be skipped. And like I said, this is useful if there's nothing programmed into them or if you want to skip it temporarily. For example, if there's interference or something going on that you're not interested in. Priority channel can be set, but only one. This can be something that you are monitoring and you don't want to miss anything. In my case, I set my local police for priority and this is the priority button. Go to the channel you want, hit the priority button and the priority will go back and check that channel more often so you don't miss anything. You can only set that for one channel. You can also scan a frequency range like I talked about using the limit button, which is right here. This is really useful for scanning for unknown stations. You will likely not be using this too much as you can pretty much look up any frequency nowadays. And unless there is something specific you're looking for, in that case, I would say refer to the manual and that can be downloaded of the internet. Uh, I have found multiple PDFs. People have scanned and saved these as these are pretty good radios. So there really is not much to these radios. Let's look at the uh, back of the unit. So the back of the unit is pretty straightforward. Essentially, you got the antenna right here. This antenna, by the way, does unscrew, and you should unscrew this if you are using uh, an antenna which connects here. And this is the, I believe it's, uh, I have to look it up, but it is a name for this type of antenna uh, that is used in car stereos as well. And um, you can use an adapter and connect any kind of a scanner antenna to this that you like. Uh, next to it is the tape out, and the tape out is essentially something that you will not be using anymore since nobody really really records the tapes but you can use it to record to a computer if you like next to that is the speaker out as well as the power and you can run this off of AC like I am right now which is basically plugs into the outlet or you can run it off of 12 volts uh, or 13.8 if you will which is essentially the same as your car will supply so you can plug this into a cigarette lighter in your car or whatnot running off of that, followed by a reset button, which you can use to reset all the memories in the radio, and a 9-volt battery backup, which is a little compartment that has a 9-volt battery, and essentially that allows you to store memories in the radio. So again, not much to them, a very simple unit. Top features a speaker, and that's really all there is to it. One of the best places to look is radioreference.com. And here you can pretty much find any frequency for the United States. Here I'm looking at the state of Utah. And specifically, uh, once you get to a state, you can select the county. Salt Lake City County is what I'm looking at here, since this radio is going to be going to my nephew Attila. And uh, he can look up frequencies for what he is interested in scanning and listening to. This, of course, would include airports, amateur radio, uh, local businesses and events, federal frequencies, which are uh, obviously nationwide. The common aviation frequencies are listed here for his region. These do vary slightly from airport to airport and uh, also from uh, different airlines. Amateur radio frequencies, of course, are here. The National Weather Service also has their frequencies, and these are national. And you got the maritime uh, VHF uh, frequencies, which we already covered a little bit, the Family Radio Service, FRS, and the GMRS, General Mobile Radio Service, are pretty common. These are the ones that you get with those little radios that uh, you buy uh, when you pick up a handy talkie, like at uh, Cabela's or any kind of a outdoor sporting uh, store. And, of course, there are the railroad frequencies, 
which uh, a lot of people really enjoy listening to the railroads. The good old Citizen Band or CB Band frequencies are also fun to listen to. However, these may or may not be available in your scanner depending on whether it covers 30 megahertz or below given their frequencies. So as you can see, there's still plenty you can listen to on these radios. Of course, uh, trunks frequencies and some of the agencies which have converted to digital will not be something you can listen to on these older radios, but that honestly is a small fraction in most areas. If you feel I did not cover something fully, or if you have some additional information to add as to what I have covered here for the Pro 2021, I would appreciate your input by commenting below. Thank you for your support and watching. As always, 7-3 for now.